Are you? You're an actor too. I saw you on Sex in the City in the episode. No, about, I, was, uh, I was in. I was in only. I was in Sex in the City. You weren't. I thought you were no. in the episode about your book. No. No. Oh, you just wrote that. No, no, Is that no. where the book I'm started? I'm in the movie. In the I'm movie. in the movie. And you made. Wait, can we talk about? This doesn't have to go on air. How are, are you? Very rich from all this. No. Nah. Medium. No. no. You want to be richer. There was money. There was money. There was money. It's like having a hit single. <laughs> yeah. The money's not still yeah. rolling in. I but still got to work. I still got to work. Both, I read, well, I read two of your books. I read, he's just not that into you. Yeah. When I first started doing open mics in New York, cause I wanted to do a joke about it. Yeah. And I realized my twin brother is not that into me. Everything well, in it, I was like, my twin brother never calls me back. Doesn't want to call you back. He doesn't want. He's like straight to voicemail. He kind of busy like a lot of the time. Very busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. holy shit. That's amazing. And then um, it's <laughs> called a breakup because it's broken. I never, we never, I never thought about that idea for twins. Yeah. And then, cause, yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. That one's good breakup. too. Yeah. How many have you written? Four. Four. What are the other two? Uh, it's just a fucking date and uh, how to keep your marriage from sucking. Oh shit! The marriage one doesn't ma- apply to me, but I probably yeah, could have yeah, used yeah. the date one. Anthony heard about it, the same guy that I went on one date with for months. How many months? And what was the what happened? We went to church on the date. Well, I was brought up Quaker. Okay. I met the guy on a dating app. He's a musician that I kind of was a fan of. Like I had listened to a couple of his songs yeah. over the years. So when he hit me up, I was like, "This is kind of exciting." He wow. was only in town working on an album, and then we found out we we're both Quaker, and he's from Philadelphia, and we were just like. We just were vibing on the text. So then we ended up going to Quaker meeting for our first date. And then we just spent this entire day together. It was really fun. At the end of the day, he was like playing with my hair. I'm like, you're so cool and thoughtful and blah, blah, blah. And then he just would text me and then never hang out with me. He oh, would text wow. me all the time. That's like textbook. And I was that's like. Classic, that's classic. He's just not that into you. Like he had a good time, but he didn't have enough of a good time. It was like, it was so annoying. Cause I kept being like, do you want to, I left my sunglasses. I was, I was not on purpose. I have ADD. Yeah. And the sunglasses cost about 10 cents. I have a bunch of them. But so he kept like showing me a picture of the sunglasses. I'm like, do you want to give them to me? Like, what do you want? I don't care if I get these back or not. Right. But you have to ask me to hang out because I've asked you to hang out and you have been busy. And he was busy doing his album. But I'm like, yeah. I don't care. Like, How busy doing his album, though? Come on. Come over for a session is what I would say. Yeah, just come hang. Come yeah. to the studio. How fucking busy. Like, I'm so busy making my album. What a lame, what a lame ass. But the music's really, is fruity. Is it? Is it good? Anthony, is it good? Do you so like it, Anthony? Fruity. It's so fruity. Yeah. But you were listening to it for. I was listening to it because I was like. You know, and then you like think you know someone, and then I'm like, but I was overlooking some of the lyrics, not some of them, but all of the lyrics. They right. were really rough, and right. it's just like on the on the nose. I don't want to say the lyrics if people might know, but off air, I'll, I'll play some of the lyrics, yeah. and you're gonna die. It's just on the nose. It says, and it, it says, I'm I'm a guy that's not gonna call you back. There were a lot of there were a lot of there were a lot of things that yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. you know, and and you know he doesn't live here, so it's not a big deal. But I'm just like, do you, if you're only here, I'm always like, oh, you're only here for a couple. Cool. Doesn't that seem cool? Right. Like he's in in and out. Oh, Yo, you're not going to be here th- forever. Right. And you're on cool. tour. Yeah. I was like, that seems like it would fit. And, you know, I kind of like date. I, d- I have a history of dating down and I don't want to date down anymore. Right. Okay. When date people that like. Did you think he was things. dating up or down? I think he was dating up, but I don't yeah. think he thought he was. But I kept getting recognized you know, on our he, date. He, he... I was like, he should be more grateful. There's like a lot of people that want to date me. Right. And I'm like. I mean, not to be an asshole, but, I, you know. Do a lot of people want to date him? Uh, Maybe. Yeah, okay. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, probably, I think so. But they're, like, older than me, probably, and fatter. Yeah, sure. His music's, like, a little <laughs> bit, like... <laughs> it's a little bit, like, was on Grey's Anatomy, like, first season, possibly. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly like, what you're talking about. Like, it may have been in, like, uh, yeah. a spinoff of The Notebook or something. One of his songs. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I don't know, but it was, I couldn't, I've never had a guy that put so much energy into communicating with me and then wouldn't hang out. And every time I was like, you have to ask, you have to do the asking. He would, he would just back out. And then then he wouldn't ask. He wouldn't ask. And then he would text me again in two weeks. In two weeks. He'd wait two weeks between instances. That's just classic. But why would he even talk to me? Why not just go away? Because he was trying to get himself to like you. Like he thought he did and he felt obligated to because you didn't have a bad time together so it's like oh, we didn't have a bad time together i should write her back she's kind of cool she's a quaker also but God, i don't know i don't know i don't know man i got some sad i got some sad fat girl songs to write 
he kept being like, he kept being like, I really want to hang out. And then I'd be like, okay, do you want to hang out? He's like, I'm working. And I was like, oh, um, <laughs> you just said to me you want to hang out. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. But it was, it was, a, you're better it off was interesting. Him. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it was, a, it was a fun little detour. I had a fun time wondering. I do like the puzzle. I'm trying Everyone to get away loves from the, the puzzle. I'm trying to get away from the emotion and availables because it's too much of a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. But emotionally unavailable is so attractive to people. People it's love gorgeous. it. And they love it when you're like, oh, I don't know if I can commit to anything. Yeah. 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 But the thing about it is it's usually real and the person really can't get into you. That's the yeah. problem. Like it seems like they're a mystery, but they really just don't have enough energy to like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a weird thing. Like sometimes you just like someone, but not that much. You yeah. even do that with friends. You know, like there's a friend that you're like, like they're fucking, they show up on your phone. You're like, I don't have to go back I, this person for three days. Yeah, I don't have to come back for three days, and then there's somebody hits your phone. You're like, "Fuck! I gotta get. I gotta make sure I get back to. That. I'm gonna get back to them now." Yeah, you know, like we just do that with people. It's just where we are. I know. I must do that to people all the time. But I did. I was in a a thing with a guy for like a year who he friend zoned me after like three months, and then I just kept hanging out with him. It was just so infuriating. And then I was just like, my feelings were hurt all the time. And I honestly, when I thought about it, was like, I because I saw him on a dating site after all of this, mm -hmm. and I was like, if I didn't know him. And there was no history. I just saw this this profile. Yeah. Would I, would I swipe to hook up with him? And I was like, one hundred percent. I would have been like, pass. Like I didn't even like him, but the fact that he wasn't sure he liked me made yes. me like hooked on it. Yeah. And I was like, and then just every day, just being like, I, it was. It, Anthony's been through it all with me. Poor Anthony. <laughs> Anthony's like, I think you just need to move on. Get your self esteem together and move on. Yeah. But anyway, so that was kind of like your. So did you you wrote the episode of Sex in the City? That was your. I didn't write that. I came up with the. What happened was there was a girl at work who asked me during a lunch break about a guy she was seeing that didn't want to have sex with her, and she was like, "Do you think that's bad?" And I was like, "I just <laughs> fucking stared at her for fifteen minutes. What are you supposed to do?" And then I said, "Yes, I think that's bad." And then at some point, I said, "He's just not that into you." And this other girl writer, Liz Tachillo caught the phrase i don't yeah. remember saying it and said we got to put that in an episode that's and then, cute. was she your co-writer co-author she's a co-author of the book oh, yeah great. yeah there would have been no book without her she was fully the reason there was a book i didn't want to write a book she was like you gotta write a book now I'm you like, can't stop writing books now i can't stop writing books but i i know i'm writing another one now called how to not, don't take bullshit from fuckers i love it by the way so you, you have just you've become you've made a transition into being a life coach pretty recently right yeah it was a thing somebody suggested another life coach came up to me and said i have this girl that wants to talk to you and she and I, and she goes have you ever thought about life coaching i was like no not really and she said well you should talk to this girl because she really wants to talk to you and i think you should do this because why not you you know you can just do it from your phone and and people would be into it. And then I did it once and I liked it. And I was like, this is great. And yeah. I got the books and the history and all that kind of stuff. And you know what going on the road's like. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. And I'm old. How Wait, and your girls are how old now? My girls are 19 or, or uh, uh, 18. They're going to both just turn 18 and 15. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting big. Yeah, yeah. They're already. And that 15-year-old, you want to hang out before she goes off to school, right? You want to be around more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love being around him. I started hanging out with my dad when I was 15. Like, my dad was working. He was the treasurer at University of Pennsylvania, and he was just busy all the time. He was so angry. He hated working for people, obviously, mm. but he just couldn't suck it up. My dad used to listen to Belt, um, Elton John, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me every morning. I When I listen to that now, I laugh so hard at how pissed my dad was he had to go to work. <laughs> like, yeah. just screaming that song at, like, 5 in the morning, waking all of us up. But so he was like very angry. And then he retired early when I was 15. And that was right when I was getting my learner's permit. And it was like when I stopped being a juvenile delinquent, like yeah. everything changed when I got to hang out with my dad. It was like the best. Really? Yeah. And you guys hung out a lot? Yeah. And now we talk on the phone all the time. Yeah. FaceTime every day. It's the oh, best. you do? Oh, wow. Yeah. But like 15. I hope like that, that I hope that happens. Yeah. You need your, you need my your older, pops. My older one's a little bit tough with me. Yeah. Like she's a little bit like, like, I don't know, maybe a month ago, she, she stopped me in the kitchen. She goes. You're wearing a lot of statement jewelry right now. <laughs> I was like, fuck you. Yeah. Why are you giving me shit in my own house? And then I go, I've always worn statement jewelry. And she goes, have you? I was like, fuck you. Why? <laughs> she's a little bit tough. She's a little tough with me. She's a little I can bit. second that. You have always worn statement jewelry. I've always worn statement jewelry. I'm surprised you're not wearing like a pinky ring. I know well, my wedding ring's enough. Yeah, it'll clink around. That's cool. And enough with a little crown the king. on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm the king. The king of my wife's.
Sorry, I said it. Yeah. Your wife doesn't deserve that. She doesn't. <laughs> she she really doesn't. And she wouldn't she would be she'd be super bummed by that. I'm sorry. We'll take it, we'll edit it out. But um yeah, it's weird. I just started realizing because I'm 36 now. I don't like I'm nowhere close to having kids or anything, but I have a twin brother with kids and I'm very I'm I think I've become the one that won't call you back. Yeah, the one that won't call me back. But now yeah. I got his kids and his wife. I talk to them every day. So I'm like, Psh, Max, nobody needs you. Oh yeah, right. I got there the girls. Go. I got right, the right. girls. He's got two girls. Yeah, two girls, and my older brother has two boys. Oh wow, it's kind of perfect. Great. That's yeah. great. I'll have to if I have a kid, it'll have to be a hermaphrodite. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I met a hermaphrodite the other day. She was very drunk. She was really drunk at the bar, and she talked a lot at the improv. She talked a lot about being. A she talks. Yeah, she really blurted it out. Where I was almost like, I don't know if you're a hermaphrodite or there's something else going on here. Is that and that's when you have both, right? Yeah. That's got to be just the one is enough. Yeah, I know. I'd like to have none sometimes. I know. You just have girls, right? I just have two girls. Yeah. You know, they say that's the happiest household is two girls. If you add three, it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. But girls, I don't know. I I never had sisters, so I don't really know what it's like. But my sister-in-law has a sister. They seem pretty chill. These two love each other. They're they're really, really tight. Yeah. They're really tight. It's cute. They're, how, yeah. And they're so they're four years apart. Three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. My nieces are four years apart. But I was just going to say, like, I am just getting to that age where I'm starting to see my parents side of things. Like when I look back on stories and like like when I'm like mad, I'm like, oh, remember that time? And I'm like, oh, there was one time I came from the mall. I was 12, I think. And they I just it was the first time I'd found like a makeup bar. Yeah. And I came with like all the makeup on my mom. I got in the car. My mom goes. You look like a tart. And I was like, what's a tart? And she's like a prostitute. And I was like, mom. And for some reason, I hung on to that as this like really horrible thing my mom said to me. I'm thinking right. about it now, I'm like, that's fucking hilarious to call yeah, yeah, me a tart. And I came in with like full makeup to call me a tart. The word tart itself. Tart, tart is, tart is li- like tart isn't, it is prostitute, but it's not quite. It's cute. It's, it's on its way there. It's a sweet version of a prostitute. Yeah, it yeah, is. Because it's also a treat. It's a tart like completely is a treat. sweet. It's tart. It's tart. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny, like looking back, I'm like, I would, I mean, if I had kids, the amount of things I would say to them, I mean, who even knows? Just not pat, and that's just like a moment in a car. Oh yeah, that I just yeah, re- happened yeah, yeah. to remember. That just stuck for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm starting to see like the grown up side of things, and it's funny because with the statement jeweler thing, it's weird that you know you're cool. You've always been cool. I, you don't think of yourself as that way, but you know what you like. Like you know what you like to do. Yeah. You know, you know what makes you yeah. feel okay. You're like I, I'm gonna do this, and then hopefully that's okay. Yeah. It feels good. And uh, so then you don't judge it anymore. You yeah. just are like, that's that's just what that's I do. Like and then somebody points it out and you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And when it's a young person, you're like, oh, man, am I, is it just getting too old? Am I? But then, you know, you don't want to be an old person either. So you're sort of stuck. Yeah. You know, you kind of go, and then I'm like, you know what? Fucking Carl Lagerfeld is a nut job and he's 90 something. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to go out that way. I I'll, think I'm going to peak go weird. in my older years. You're going to peak then? I think in my 70s, I'm going to be really... Is that something. when your shit's going to really... Be- I hope maybe 80s, though, because 70s is, like, still old light to me. I think yeah. 80s is when you really want to shine, because that's yeah. when shit starts to really fall out of your asshole into your pants when you're sitting on a plane. <laughs> you always want to smell the shit. I was on an airplane once. I was on an airplane once, and there was a little kid, an old guy, and it smelled like shit for, like, 20 minutes, and we were, like... And it, we were going to Montreal. I was going to the festival. I was sitting next to little Esther, and we're, like... I had to go to this French woman. I mean, they're so angry. And I had to go to this French woman and be like, your kid shit its pants. You have to. And she was like, no, she didn't. Like pulled the kids like pretty much asshole out to me. I was like, there's no shit here. And I was like, oh. And then I realized I was a fucking old, old man. man. And this, you can't tell him. That's what horrible. What are you going to tell him? You can't tell him. And he doesn't know. Or no. he does know. And there's nothing you can do about it. And eventually he went to the bathroom. We all turned to see if there was a brown spot. And then, uh, you know, he came back and it didn't smell anymore. I must have thrown his underwear out. But I was like, oh, God, uh, you can't judge it because it's going to be us. Hopefully, if we're lucky. If we're lucky. If we're lucky, if we're we get to live right. long enough to yeah, shit yeah, on a yeah, plane. Yeah. Shit yeah. our pants on a fucking plane. And honestly, oh, I shit my pants on a plane when I was very little. I was, a, I was a plane shitter as a child. My dad, I remember my dad taking my seven up and taking my little shit nugget. And I remember like, that was my seven up. Another traumatizing moment. Dad, my seven up. And he's like, just trying to like get the feces off the floor. You shit on the floor? I shit on the floor. You mean you took your pants out and shit on the floor? No, it fell. The nugget fell through my pant leg and I kicked it and it was seen by everyone. There was no hiding it. So you were old enough to know what you were doing. I was like four. Okay. I remember it. I remember the trauma of the seven up. 
be like, Dad, no, because that was like one of my favorite parts of flying. Was, like, was get it getting a free seven out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize like you can just get another one. And shitting on the floor kind of takes precedent over your soda. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would have done if my daughter shit herself on an airplane. I shit in the pool too. I mean, if they were when they were little, when they were like babies, you then you expect it. But there's yeah. a certain age where you're like. Or you're supposed to have it together. Yeah, you kind of got. Yeah, it was even you, five. I feel like it might have even been five. But I shit the pool. Nice, I shit the pool once, and my mom was like, "Is that your shit?" And I remember just going, "Mm mm." And she was like, "Are you sure?" And I was like, "Mm hmm." <laughs> like so shit shamed. I was shit shamed. I should shame myself. Were there other kids in the pool? Yeah, not after that. We all had to. We Everybody all had to evacuate. Had to Everyone had to get out. Oh man. It wasn't a baby Ruth this time. Let's just say that. Oh man. It was an Annie. It was. A Baby Annie. <laughs> Baby Annie shit the pool. Well, I had I had shitting problems when I was little. They almost kicked me out of nursery school because I uh, I couldn't shit. So then they would give me laxatives, and then I shit so much that they were like, "You can't come back" because they had carpets. They're like, "What are we gonna do? What are you gonna do? Why would they give you laxatives? Why wouldn't they just let you not shit? What was well, because it? it was so long. Oh, it was, was, and it honestly, was I'm constipated now, so it's weird. This is coming up. It's been a couple of days for me here. I've been trying to take my fiber. Yeah. I've been eating bad, Greg. I've been off my programs. Have you? Yeah, I've been Are bad. You? I've been a bad, bad, <laughs> bad baby. I've been very bad. I've been indulging in codependent relationships. I've been indulging in eating like shit. I always go like this. I'm like, I, I have an addictive personality, so I'm like, I'm going to just ride this out until right. it feels overwhelming. Then I'm going to stop. I try not to shame myself during it. Right. Because that makes it last longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are, are you in a cycle now where you're, you're, you're just eating badly? And now you're not shitting. I'm not shitting. I'm eating badly. I had a, I have a little bit of an unhealthy little fling for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a little, a little, a little fling. Yeah, a little unhealthy. Is that bad? Fling. Is that bad? Is that unhealthy? You know, I think when I look Don't at my goals. Don't people like flings? Yeah, but I think when I look at my goals, I you know. It's not on the fling. You just have. I'd fling. like to date someone over the age of twenty-five uh -huh. or. You know, someone that maybe like owns a house. I, I made this. I was like, listen, you can only go on dates with people like own a house. Okay. Which right. okay. really eliminates every that guy. That narrows it down. I it? It's every guy yeah. I've ever talked to in my life. But I do think I'm at a, a level in my life and my career is about to kind of take this step mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it's time for me to be raising the vibrational level and kind of yeah. not. It's usually I like tip a guy and then I'm like, <laughs> thank you for parking my car, Diego. Would you like to come to me, Casa? <laughs> <laughs> and by that, let's bang in the backseat of this Prius. <laughs> we'll move all the trash out of the way. Um, so I'm just trying to get my shit together. But, you know, I had a little relapse. Yeah. Okay. It was like a relapse. But I just got out of a very codependent friendship. I actually got a question from someone. Yeah. Are you interested in um, taking questions? From yeah, me? sure. Okay. I'm happy to take questions. All right. So let's go to them. Someone said, it's a little bit of a basic question. I'm going to say that. Insanities, get your shit together. These are actually better than I'm, I'm used to. I don't know if you listened to the my uh, announcement what? that you were going to be on here. That yeah, that usually oh, I, I say, would you ever? And then people are like, would you suck your dad shit out of your dad's ass or or milk out of your mom's? You're like, I'm just like, what? What's you guys are monsters. They're monsters. What's wrong with your fan They're base? monsters. They're monsters. What? They're all monsters. They really are. I haven't Anthony? seen you do an hour before. I think I'd like to see you do an hour. <laughs> it's just I need all. To see what happens. I honestly I need to know what happened. I need to, I, it is, I do have to accept responsibility. Yeah. Um, all right. Where's the codependent one? Someone said codependent friendships, try to fix or just end. Codependent friendships. Wow. It depends. I mean. It codependents. Good night, everybody. Yes. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. I can't stop. Thank you for coming. I, I end it. Yeah. End it. Cause it's a problem with you. Yeah. Oh God. If you're codependent. Yeah. I mean, it depends if the, it depends on which way the codependency works. Yeah. Or, I mean, or I, I guess it works both ways, but yeah, I don't know. I haven't had a codependent relationship in a long time. I just, I just ended one. Friendship. It was both. It was both. Cause he stopped. He, he cut it off sexually. Oh, okay. Three, three months in. And then I just, I was so hooked and I just stayed. I mean, the friendship was fun and good, but it was like, Calling in the morning, calling at night, all day, everything we did together, everything was together, but together, together. But then it together. never paid off in sex. It never paid off in sex or anything. It was never like, it was just such a weird, it was such a weird thing. And it's I hard just, to roll it backwards. Mm -hmm. if, 
you can move it forward sometimes, but you can't roll it mm -hmm. back once you've fucked. Yeah. That's it. Then you're. But also, I do these crazy things where I can't blame back, the yeah. other person in any way. I was like, I would write jokes for him. Like, I would be like thinking about like, I do this all the time when I date someone. My last boyfriend was a comic too. And I would like, I would just be thinking about his career and his stuff. I was like his agent. I'm like, what am I doing? It's so yeah, weird. No, I'm just no. completely, really just exhausted by it by the end of it. So Yeah. <laughs> Codependency is just not good on any level. Yeah. You got to take, end it, end, end it, it for yourself. Don't even worry about them. They don't even matter. That's what the fucked up part about codependency is. Yeah, the yeah, other yeah. person, yeah. you're using them as a tool to avoid yourself. A hundred percent. It's all That's you. A good answer. All right. When is the right time to start dating after splitting with the mother of your son? <laughs> oh, wow. These sound like you questions, guys. Sound like you got to do a little meditating and think about it yourself. Yeah. I mean... Fuck, I don't know. It depends. Like, it depends on how unhappy you were, how bad the relationship was. Yeah. I mean, yeah. With, and then with kids and dating, I don't know. Well, the kid should not be. I think you shouldn't even involve a kid until you've been with the person long enough that you think you're going to, like, have a long committed relationship. But even to know to go down that path, like, to think to yourself, oh, what am I going to bring this other person into my... Because, you know, I don't know. I would wait a good six months at least. Yeah. Just give it just a period of like we're done and yeah. now nothing's going on yeah you know what i mean i just think even with my nieces like when they meet my boyfriends and stuff which by the way they think my niece goes where's your dad and i went my dad you my dad's grandpa and she goes no your dad i go who's your dad and she goes leave schreiber my ex-boyfriend which we'll be dubbing that to say leave schreiber put the note every time i say his name we just put leave schreiber, leave schreiber. but um yeah she thought my ex-boyfriend was my dad <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> how, she says it all the time. How old was he? Was he like my age? He was like 42. Oh, my. I was younger than me. Yeah, he's nothing. Holy shit. And, uh, but, you know, he looks older than me. <laughs> but, uh, and then but I like. Does he look like your dad? No. Not at all. She's just so little. She doesn't know what dad is. Yeah, right. You know, you ask them how old you are. They're like, five? Are you five? I'm like, yes, I'm five. <laughs> they either say like 70 or five. It's always like, some. it's either very flattering or very hurtful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When a child, but you notice how kids don't want to be told. I don't know if I'd be, I would be flattered if somebody thought I looked five. Yeah. I would think I had some sort of condition at that point. I know, like, said, maybe the chest. You look like you're five. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're five. I'm like, I'm five. Yeah, I'm five, bitch. These are fake teeth. These aren't even my grown up teeth yet. But then, okay, wait, so, but I do like to, even if I'm just kind of like hanging out with a guy, I do introduce them to my nieces on, I don't, I just say they're my friends on FaceTime because they're so boy crazy right now. They're four and seven mm -hmm. or three and seven. And so they, they get so cute when there's a boy and they, they freak yeah, out. They get excited like they're like, about ah, it. Yeah, my, my one friend's like, like that. she's just like, are you boyfriend and girlfriend? Like falls off the screen. Like they can't handle it. It's so cute. That's so it's great. fun to tease them. But I'm never like, I brought a couple boys to Thanksgivings. That's never going to happen again. It's weird. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, it's just weird. Then they're like, what happened? They got to explain heartbreak to explain, a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, listen, do you know what someone yelling at you for not giving enough blowjobs is? <laughs> do you know what it's like to wake up to that? <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Can you yell at somebody for that? No, you're not supposed to do that before no. you break up. Yeah. Also, let's be real. Ia did get a lot of blowjobs. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> he was crazy. I was, I was like, who? what girlfriend are you talking about? Not this one. I feel like there's certain people that just there needs to be a problem. So they create a problem. And then you're like, that's not our problem. Oh, that's for sure. I'm like, sex that's ain't our sure. problem. When dating someone new, does text response time matter? Yeah. How do you feel about the games in the beginning well it it isn't usually meant to be a game yeah i mean text response time i don't know if it's if it's chronic if any of it becomes chronic then it's a problem right. like if it's all the time and it takes two three hours to get back to you yeah fuck that guy yeah you know what i mean like but every once in a while you know sometimes you just don't see a text yeah. sometimes you genuinely are busy but it seems like most of the time you just write people back when you're interested like you wrote and asked me to do this yeah do this 
I wrote you back in a reasonable amount yeah. of time, like in the amount of time that would let you, you know, it's a couple of weeks. No, when you're online, that's the other thing. Go online because nobody knows that you've seen it or not. Keep right. it to the DMs. Nobody fucking knows. But I did have, a, I've had a couple guys where you, I can feel them gaming me where they're like, I can see them not respond, the response time. They're trying to be cool, which I guess I'm fine with. If I, they're trying to be like, there's like this power game. Would you be weirded out if a guy texts you right back? Would that make him, would that reduce, would that make you feel like, eh? I don't know. I really crush on text, dude. I'm so good at text. So I like to just text a lot, but they yeah. would say you shouldn't do that because it's building too much of like a thing up before you meet the person or whatever. Like all yeah. the, you know, I have like friends that are like, yeah, I'm a dating expert. All single, all alone. Yeah. All have like herpes all over their body. Just like full head to toe <laughs> herpes. Just like, okay, give me more advice, dude. But they're always like, you got like, it's up to the man. I have a problem where I always end up dating guys who don't have dads, which makes them just like, no offense. I'm sure there are some guys without dads that are men, but haven't met you yet. Um, but oh, just really? like, they're very like effeminate with their, they're more like cats with like dating. And I'm like, this is just so like, I have to be the boy. No, oh, right, right, I'm right. I'm just like, all yeah, right. I think there's a lot of boys. I think there's a lot of guys out there like that. I don't even know if they don't have dads. I think that their dads, I don't think anyone's dad's raising them to ask anybody out. I don't think yeah. anyone does that anymore. It's hard now too. With someone, that was another one of the questions. Someone asked, um, how do you hit on a girl without getting rejected or friend zoned? And my other thing with that is the, the hottest thing about getting hit on by a guy is the fact that you know you might get rejected, but you're still doing it. You have right. to show the risk of it and you just have to deal with getting rejected. It's yeah. just, you just get rejected. Grow up. Yeah, that's the part of the, that was always part of the, th I mean, I came up in a different time. So you had to ask people out. Otherwise, you were not going to go out with anybody. Yeah. Nobody was going to ask you out. Yeah. Like women weren't very often asking guys out. So if you didn't fucking, and part of the fun is like, all right, here we go. Here we go. This could, this could end horribly. Like to me, that yeah. was kind of part of the fun. You know what I mean? Like, you know, most, most of the time, it would go okay every yeah. once in a while like, you, you just get you would just crash and burn yeah but that's like and then you pick yourself up from yeah, the ashes you pull yourself up man you just go it's home and you handle your own business you're fine oh yeah but there is we well, do like, that no matter what but well everyone's so like scared the the me too stuff has like scared guys too which um i understand but it is just it is a tricky thing just don't i don't know has it is, is it is it at the point where guys what are, what's the approach like now? What do guys say? Well, I'm still getting mad dick pics, so I don't know. I mean, I'm still getting like, I'm getting me too up the wazoo over here. I'm getting producers leaning in. I'm getting landlords leaning in. I'm getting every autistic kid in fucking Southern California thinks I'm going to be their their behavioral therapist slash girlfriend. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Everyone inappropriate thinks I'm I'm the girl. It was funny because I was I was talking to Rogan about it, and I was like. I don't know. It's like probably just because I'm so hot. And then the more we're talking about, it, I'm like, no, I just seem really easy. I guess <laughs> like every guy's like, she'll be the one. But I used to be a special ed teacher and stuff. And all the kids were like always in love with me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, am I giving off like I'll be the teacher that fucks these students too? Like <laughs> I'm giving off some weird sort of sort of vibe. Maybe it could be. I got to rework my thing. But I am. I think now I, I need to just focus on work. Let these eggs dry up and just. Work on my work. Oh yeah, work on yeah, work on your work. Just work on my work because I'm I am like getting threatened to be evicted every month. It's just like I'm my I feel like my skill level and my career are not matching my money. Yeah. Okay. And that's got to be that. a me. That's a me problem. Right. That's not a anybody else problem. No, but it's a problem you can solve. Mm -hmm. That's a problem Working you can solve. I want to write a book. I hit you up. This is how we became friends. Years ago, I DM'd you and I was like, will you teach me how to write a book? Which is a crazy thing to DM someone, by the way. That's so funny. It's insane. What did I say to you? You were like, sure, let's meet up. And then you were like, you were busy with your family. And then I went, oh my God, you just have a fa Just like live your life with your family. Let's just, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. letting you off the hook. <laughs> I was like, what is this like expecting someone? It's like when people come to you about comedy, like how do you do comedy? It's like, go do it. Well, people come in, like people will ask you, I mean, there's usually you sit down with somebody and go, there's only so much I can tell you because writing a book is only one thing. It's writing a book. Yeah, you write it's a book. exactly like stand up. Yeah. There's only one way to do stand up yeah. and that's to do it. There's no at home method. Yeah. There's no tricks to it. You just got to fucking write five minutes yeah. and go say it yeah. and then be okay with bombing <laughs> and then just keep doing it. And with writing a book, you just have to write shit into a fucking program and get it done yeah. and then rewrite it and then rewrite it that's all it is i never really learned drafts i think and then you get scared because you were you're you look at things like oh everything's to be perfect and then 
you no, know, you're staring at a blanket. Terrible. My first drafts are rotten. Yeah, you got to write trash. Oh, man. My writing is just terrible. And then I rewrite it. And then I'm like, I can't believe I wrote this. And then I rewrite it again. And then I rewrite it again. I don't like the process. It takes forever. Yeah. And I don't like being by myself. I prefer to write with somebody. But but that's it. That's just, I mean. Do you ever write something and go, damn. Every once in a while. I'm like, boom. Every once it. in a while, yeah. I'll write something. And I'll go like, oh, there we, there's a good, that's a good catchphrase. Or that's a yeah. good idea. That's a good, that's a good thought, you know, but little tiny things. Most of the time I still think, oh, who cares? Now what inspired don't take shit from fuckers? I actually wrote that. I was so right when I started to like try and get people to be, uh, to, for life coaching, um, I thought, oh, I should put up some kind of an inspirational quote or something on my, and so I put up one quote. It was like, transformation is possible. Like, just so lame. Yeah. So fucking lame. Like, just meaningless. The statement jewelry of a quote. Totally. hundred <laughs> percent. Just meaningless. And then I, and then I wrote, uh, and then I was so mad about it. I wrote, don't take bullshit from fuckers. And people just fucking like, 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 yeah. like, 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 you know, they like that idea. And then someone's like, write a book, write a book, write a book. And then I just started thinking about how much bullshit I've taken in my life, like even in career stuff, like mm -hmm. this whole thing started because not that long ago, I got a call from my agents and my managers, both saying you're too old and you're too white and there's not much we can do. And you've then I, been tanning ever since I have been, <laughs> I've been, and I've been trying to wear more statement jewelry. <laughs> no, but I, I really did sort of like believe them. And then I was like, yeah. what kind of bullshit is that? That's just a lazy thing. Somebody who doesn't want to work for you mm -hmm. says, and I want to work, so fuck it, I'll do it without him. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, and that was sort of part of my motivation to go in this other direction and to give, rather than I can do stand up, but why not give a workshop, charge more, and have people come yeah, out and, and have more of an impact. Of, yeah, and have more of an impact. Just to, not and just the laugh. dialogue is fun, and you can be funny in it. You can be doing being hilarious while you're talking about the stuff that's like actually impacting people and being good. Yeah, exactly. I'm a big fan. I got. I'm I'm with you, dude. I honestly, I was excited when I saw that. I was thinking about because a lot of times you, you see like a life coach and you're like, all right, <laughs> like oh, no. show me like one thing you've done. But you, you, you're a musician, you're a comedian, you are an author, you were a TV writer. Like you've done all of these things that are so impressive. You're like your family seems fucking beautiful, dude. Thank I you. love watching your Thank you. your daughters. This is so Thank creepy. You. I love watching your daughters grow on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you. I do. That's a weird it's, thing though, but it yeah, is. Yeah, I, I your feel wife that way seems so like. I mean, I don't obviously don't know what your marriage is like, but you seem really like solid and communicative and it's just good. Yep. I saw I was just saw you on uh, Oprah's podcast. Was that an older one? Re yep. And then your wife was on it with you. She was on it with me. We, oh, we so taught cool. a life class on 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 Oprah's network when that first started. And then and then she re I, they put it together as a podcast. I didn't know what somebody wrote me the other day and said, you know, you're on Oprah's podcast. So this cool. week. I was like, fuck, perfect. Thank timing. God. Yeah, grateful. Perfect freaking yeah, yeah, yeah. timing. Oprah has been super great to me. Now, when you coach people, you do it like they call you once a week, once yeah, every two weeks. Once a week. And then you kind of set up a plan for them. And yeah, we set up a plan and we talk about what it is they want to get done. And then I hold them accountable. And then we get to know each other. And then I can, you know, once I've known somebody a while, I can go, oh, that's just bullshit that you do all the time. You know what I mean? Like I can get to a you sense can call of who the they shit are. Out. Yeah. Because yeah. that's kind of what he's just not that into you is too. It's just like, yeah. Sorry, girl. It's just not that. Like, just cut all the excuses and the stuff that's just, keeping you from spinning or keeping you spinning, which is keeping you from moving on and right. finding the things you want. And, and it's all stuff that you basically already know. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not telling anybody anything they haven't already thought about themselves. Mm -hmm. They just want confirmation. And then they want permission to go on and do something else. And they want to make sure that somebody makes sure that they do it. Yeah, it's interesting how in life you just have to hear. I've heard everything that has this huge impact on me. It oh, I always hear it at the... You just have to have the, it has to be the right time. Yeah. Like everything needs to align. You hear it and they go, oh, now I understand. Now I'm ready is. for it. Because sometimes people just yeah. aren't ready for information. You can't, that's the one thing is you can't get someone to change who's not interested. They just won't mm -hmm. change. That, and that's the, that's the toughest thing about relationships is like, you can't get someone to feel differently about you than they do. Mm -hmm. Just can't. Yeah. They have, it has to happen for them on some level. Yeah. I've been working on detachment too and thinking more about, what I'm projecting onto other people and this sense of control. Once I, I just read uh, Women Who Love Too Much. It's like about codependency and oh, stuff. And yeah. I was like, oh, fuck. Because you think you're being nice. I'm like, oh, I'm such a sweet, like, sometimes I'm like being a fucking martyr. I'm being controlling. Like, it's all yeah. to try to control yeah. the outcome. 
yeah. and to try to try manipulate to people. Outcome. And I had a rough couple of days after that where I was like, oh, I had to just kind of sink in sort of the nastiness of it, where there is like a dark undertone to the things that I do when I think I'm being kind or whatever. Mm -hmm. And not to like beat myself up about it, but I just had a couple of days where I was like, ooh, yikes. <laughs> well, it's hard. I mean, it's, 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 uh, you know, fucking other people are a puzzle, man. And the thing that I really came to this year was like, just want nothing from people. Yeah. Don't want anything from them. Yeah. Don't. And, and then you end up getting much more than you expected because you came in with zero expectations. I don't expect my wife to wake up and love me. I don't care how she feels about me. I, I don't need anything from her. What I want to know is what can I do for you today? Is there anything I can do to make your day better? And then just stay the fuck out of her wife. Yeah. And 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 let her decide how she wants to reciprocate love with right. me. And and it turns out to be great that way because it, I'm often surprised at, at at and I can also see oh that's the way she loves me oh that's her kindness oh that's what that's that's the way that she wants to communicate mm -hmm. with me as opposed to some idea that I have about how it's supposed to go you know some story I've written about what love looks like yeah. or some story I've written about what relationships are supposed to be and you're like attached to this outcome and then you have no control over that outcome so the chance of you even getting that thing is so slim anyway 100% it doesn't even exist and then you're disappointed if you don't get this like one in a million reaction <laughs> that's it exactly yeah. and they and they also people sense when you want something from them and they withdraw. Yeah. So then you're getting less and then you're irritating them and then your need gets bigger and bigger and you're driving them away because they're like, ew, gross. I don't want to, neediness is such you a- sound like my ugh. audience is like, get off, bitch. <laughs> no, but there is like, I had a whole thing where I was, I was projecting this anger onto the audience. Yes. And I was having these crazy, weird, tight sets and just- just assuming that people weren't there to see me at the show that they were there to see me at. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. There's just this weird... Audiences are weird. I have to forget, like, sometimes I do... I'm sober, so I'll do sober shows. And when I go to them, they're always amazing because I love sober people because they're all fucked up. And so I know they're already <laughs> broken. And I go in loving them. And then I forget, why don't I just love regular crowds? Yeah. I don't go in loving regular crowds. I usually go in going, be fucking nice to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You better yeah. fucking be nice I'm to me. here for me, and you're here for me, and we're going to give me what I need from exactly. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's 100% it. And then you're like, why isn't this working? It's because you're not loving them. Like, and you they're just go like, I'm, I got two drinks, bitch. I paid my thing. I'm what, watching. What do you want yeah. here? I'm sorry no one's sitting in the chair next to me, man. That's just the way it panned out tonight. And they don't want you to have a bad set. Nobody no. wants that. It's the worst experience to be at a show, and someone's just bombing. Yeah. Except for a comic. It's fun to watch your friends bomb a little bit. Yeah, of course. It's fun to give a little cackle on the back. You know Brian Baldinger? Baldinger? I know the name. He's a, yeah, he's a, um, you probably know him from years ago. He used to be the talent director at uh, the Improv years ago, and he was like a Montreal guy and stuff like that. But he, oh, I know becoming friends with him was so fun because he would just cackle. Every time I bombed, he would just, I would hear him just like cackling in the back. Yeah. And it just brought so much joy to my heart yeah. to just be like, well, at least that's happening. Yep. And also, you know, then you get to that point where you realize bombing is like this incredible gift that's like showing you where you need to grow or connect more or. Oh, totally. Or just let go of a night. Just let go of this weird one night that yeah. didn't go right. Yeah, realize that you didn't, you're not going to connect with everybody. That not everyone, not everyone's going to get your deal. Yeah. You know, and I, then sometimes, and, and sometimes you're not as fucking as clever as you think you are. Oh, yeah. You know, so you, you got to go pull back it off. and work. I went in really cocky once this weekend. I went to comics in, in Foxwoods when it was a. Uh, Still at Foxwoods and now it's somewhere else. But uh, so I went into it. I had, a, I had a talk show on E for four episodes. I hadn't really been doing stand up because mm -hmm. I've been focused on the show. That. But I was like, yeah, I got this show. You know, nobody watched. Um, I'm like, I got this show, whatever. I'm cool. I'm going to headline this weekend, you know. And I just couldn't connect with the audience. I bombed the entire weekend. Just the entire. I just couldn't. People were like yelling out, like, you suck. And I was like, I know. Like, it was just like so painful. I just couldn't couldn't get it together and then i was flying back and i was just cry i was just like so miserable like i should quit comedy i'm terrible and i was next to this this african guy right and I, i'm like he's talking to me this guy sam he goes i'm telling him why i'm so upset and everything and then i go wait what do you do i didn't ask him one question about himself I go, what do you do sam and he goes oh i work doctors with borders i oh my god i work with aids babies in africa he was born in this village in africa he somehow was so smart that they took him and gave, and educated him in in france and then he traveled the world and then oh, he got shit. back came back to africa it was so and he goes do you know what i think you need to do and i went when he goes 
just something outside of yourself. Just don't think about yourself. Oh my god! And I was just like, okay. Oh my god! What <laughs> an like amazing thing! What a what an insane thing to say to a comedian. <laughs> it was there's so nothing funny. outside of ourselves. It's there's so nothing hard to outside not be, of ourselves. And then you have to kind of. I have to learn to be okay with the narcissism too, and I can't judge it too much. Right. You know, there's ways to work through it and not be. You don't want to suck from the world. Right. But. You know, I can't just like beat myself up over and over again because that's narcissistic too. To just be like spinning and mad at myself. That's all me, me, me. No, no, me, no. That's me. the thing. Like eventually you're like, God, just give me something else to think about. Yeah. Like good or bad. I want to stop thinking about me. Like that's what the idea of like service, like doing stuff for yeah. other people kind of is. Is like I want to do something for someone. I want to get involved in somebody else's problem. I don't want to be involved in mine. It. Oh, yeah. And then post about it. Guys, I donated to a charity. Those posts always are. I, I understand where you're raising awareness of the charity, but you're always, but I'm always like, wait, isn't this gross? I only, ra- I only get when you're raising awareness of it if you're like fucking Taylor Swift. Yeah. And then you're like, my actually raising awareness of it is so massive that it will make a difference. Yeah. If I'm raising awareness of it, it's just me saying yeah. a brag. It's just me humble bragging or yeah. not even humble bragging, just bragging. Guys, I fucking donated. I'm not going to tell you how much it was $10, but you might think it was a million. You don't know how much money I have. Actually, you guys do because i complain about it and cry every week um i shouldn't be talking about money that's another thing don't talk about it bitch just be chill just be chill let the let the let, uh, let the abundance you. come let them evict you <laughs> you've lived in a car you can do it again yeah um no i'm just kidding i think my car living days are over i do believe no but you do have to there is a little bit of like letting the abundance come in do you know who jim fortin is no do you know who michelle Chalfon is no i'm gonna connect you with all these people because i yeah. think you would you would all get along. Michelle Chalfon has a podcast called The Adult Chair that's all about... Oh, no, I do know her. Yeah, she's incredible. I do know who she is. I listen to her podcast. She's I didn't so realize good, that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, I forgot her name. That's right. You got, you would be great on her podcast. I'm yeah, gonna, she seems cool. I'm going to set you guys up. And then Jim Fort and I heard on her podcast and listened to him. And he's he's into brain science and he's also a shaman and into like vibrational levels and stuff. So it's both together. It's just oh, wow. such a fantastic... It's so cool. Interesting. Uh, so I listen to him a lot and I listen to one of his podcasts about money and about how you have to detach from money being like, oh, you work and then you get money. He's like a lot of people work hard and they make don't make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's it's money as a gift from the universe. It was this weird thing that clicked in my head. And then I just randomly got fifteen thousand dollars worth of jobs the next day. It wow. was like the weirdest thing. I got to listen to that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting for yeah, those like checks that. to come I'd in. Like I'm waiting too. for those checks to come in. I can use a gift. Yeah, I know. I can use a gift hey, of that universe, size from the universe. Let's get some gifts, dude. Yeah. Let me see if there's any other questions. How long have we been doing this? 45. Oh, only 45. Wow. How long do you normally do it? Like an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. bit more sometimes. Yeah. Um. Oh, wait. Actually, I want to talk to you about sobriety. So how long have you been sober? Uh, Three and a half years. Cool. Yeah. Do you, what was your uh, vice, if you don't mind? Oxycontin. Ooh, that's yeah, a yeah, good yeah. one, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sober before that. Then I had cancer. Then I had, then I got hooked on oxycontin. Right and after I the went cancer. Out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. Was it a? It was because an anger, of the, Was it an anger at the world? Do you think? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was super angry at the world after cancer. Super angry. Yeah. And I didn't get a cancer bump. I thought I would get a bump, like career wise. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> I didn't get my cancer bump at all. Tig took the whole thing. Tig, honestly, you're very selfish with your cancer. Your cancer bump really kind of, I mean, a lot of us had cancer around the same time and we didn't get the big bump. I never got a rape bump because my all my sexual assaults happened before the internet. And I was like, I got really jealous when people were getting rape bumps. I'm like, excuse oh me. Oh my God, rape bumps. I didn't even realize rape yeah, bumps Yeah, everyone gets, I'm like, how did your rape go up on the road? It's crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> there's no so there's no retro rape bump no you can't get it in ret- people honestly are like stop talking about it, it was a while ago <laughs> oh, man. which also wait one of my best okay i love the reviews for my podcast by the way guys please keep giving them you guys are so funny um one i got recently did you see the thing i posted anthony where they were like i like when her her hoops clink on the thing or she burped into the mic once that was sweet like it's just like so stupid but one i got a one-star review do not give me one-star reviews motherfuckers but it was funny they go wait let me ask you a question were you molested because <laughs> i had talked about it so many times <laughs> and they actually were right it's like get over it i'm over it we don't need to talk about that no man uh yes i was ang- i was super angry at the world and then i also just what happened was i 
I had cancer and I'd had and then I'd been prescribed a lot of oxycontin mm-hmm. and they didn't give me enough oxycontin to get off like the they didn't know how to get you off of it. They gave yeah. you, they give you like some oxycodone and it lasts a little bit. And I went back on the road really quickly and I started to withdraw on the road and I couldn't withdraw. I was doing a weekend in mm-hmm. St. Louis. Yeah, and so I had somebody I had somebody overnight me some oxy and then I just couldn't get off of it. Did you have to go to rehab? No, I did a, I did it uh, outpatient. I did an outpatient detox. How, and how many years were you on it? For about a year and a half. Oh, good, you caught it. Nice. Oh my God, it was the worst though. Worst thing I've ever, worst thing I've ever experienced. The coming off of oxy. Oxy's the worst. It's yeah. the, it is, like I get why it's such an epidemic. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it as a drug, it is a, in, quite enjoyable. I mean, it's. I don't know if you've taken oxy, <laughs> but it, it. It's a, it's everything that it's cracked up to be. Yeah. You feel at the same time simultaneously relaxed and energized, and all you want to do is listen to other people talk. You're interested in others, which is something I'm barely ever like so interested. Like you become like this like magnanimous, lovely creature that you never really are, or that or if you, it's almost. I would imagine it's the way you could feel on your own occasionally if all the right buttons were pushed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you mm-hmm. could push all the right buttons in yourself. Um, and so you, so you, it's, it's incredible. But then once it wears off, you're in trouble. Yeah. It's, it's spooky. I never got the pills. I was never in the pills. I was the boozins. Yeah. But then you didn't drink when you were on them. I didn't drink. No, cause I had been sober already. And then you're so like, so I'm still did. sober. I haven't had a drink since 96. I stopped drinking in 2009, January 28th, 2009. But I do um, hallucinogens. Yeah. And I was smoking weed. And Anthony, I'm giving you my weed. I went into a deep depression. Weed is fucked up, you guys. Weed is fucked up. Yeah, it's... Weed is fucked. I know some of you guys think it's medicine. I don't fucking know that universe. That is not a medicine for me. Yeah. It sends me into a depression because you know what it is? It's avoiding getting the shit done i want to get done it's all, avoiding the feelings i don't want to feel it's avoiding all of it all of it is it's all a, just a side road it's all like oh, i'm at this place i don't want to go here so i'm gonna leave i'm gonna go over here for a while and then when i come back and all those same problems are still fucking there except they've gotten worse because time has passed and i haven't done anything and i feel worse about it so i'm gonna get high again yeah and, and it's just weed and then yeah. i'm like i'm not even having fun it's not even that good of a high right well some people like it like it's some it has a sexual thing for some people yeah and it a does. sleeping thing for me I'm, I don't yeah, sleep yeah, well it used to it. make me sleepy and clumsy. Yeah, it's just not. It's not for me. I'm giving it to Anthony. Anthony, you take my drug problems. But it's so funny how, what an addict I become about things so fast. And it's like, I don't even know if it's addict mentality or just so good at procrastination. Just so it gifted. Could be good. A little bit of impulse control. Yeah, just you like. You have a little impulse control, right? Well, I like being bad. I like to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Woo, woo. <laughs> it's like my my uh, leather jacket. Is Why that was part a juvenile of your Quaker delinquent? upbringing? Yeah, that's the part of my Quaker upbringing that yeah. I like. Well, we were all bad. I must got because yeah, there was this Quaker youth retreat called Youth Quake, and it was all the teen youth groups. Great, perfect. Would meet together. Mm-hmm. We met together in North Carolina. That doesn't sound like trouble. And I tied. Did I talk about this on here yet? I tied bed sheets together. They they overheard me and my friends saying we we're going to sneak out to go make out with these boys. So they had the grown ups were like the counselors were sitting outside of our door. So mm-hmm. we tied bed sheets together. It was snowing, and we climbed out the window and scaled across the windows into my friend's hotel room, and uh, made out with these boys. I just got my nipples pierced. It was fun. Wow. Yeah, it was fun. I was a fun 14 year old and chain smoking cigarettes and just, you know. And then the woman told my mom the head of it was. You got your nipples pierced at 14? Yeah, dude. How did you know? How did you know that's even what you wanted? Um, well, I just, you know, my boobs were small. So I was like, this will help with my <laughs> boob insecurities. <laughs> and then I went, I just found a woman that was that willing like to take the bonus? genitals of a child and stab them I with needles. I was going to say, like, who does that? And also, like, yeah, yeah. Is that an added bonus? Like, well, they're not large, but check them out. That's what I thought. I have a joke about it where I'm like, but all it did was make it so that when I flash people look like two door knockers. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was just all that was avoiding too. Just dealing with the fact that I was insecure about having little boobs. I was like, let's pierce them. That would be cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but I was just, I just, I like to break the rules. I think I was starved for my parents' attention a lot too, that that was what it was. And then, uh, but they never, they never really noticed. <laughs> just like, wow. why are tits bleeding? 
Um, <laughs> Holy shit. No, my mom, I realized looking back, my mom so badly wanted to be cool when she was a teenager and never felt that. And so she was always doing things to sort of like let me be cool. But right, 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 they right, were right. dangerous. They were dangerous. She's too loose with you? She's too loose with me. Yeah, yeah. But she's good now. I've worked on forgiving my mom. It took a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love the bitch. When she's annoying, I did... um. The last I talk about when my mom said my face was shiny on Spade. Okay. You were on Spade. I was on Spade the not this past time, but the time before I I did the show and my mom goes and I know I did well. I already knew I did well, but I wanted my mom to tell me. So I was like, "How did I do?" <laughs> She's like, "You were so funny." She's like, "But your face was so shiny. Why was your face so shiny?" And I was like, "What the fuck are you talking wow. about?" I just was like, "Why?" First of all, I just stopped. I went. I just want you to know, I'm not mad. I'm not triggered. I just want to investigate why you would say that. Oh, my God. Like, why are you telling me? And she's like, you should know. I'm just trying to help. I'm like, help what? How does that help? There's no. We did didn't you really say get to her, did you say, mom, why are you so afraid of my success? Yeah. Well, you know what it is? My sister-in-law goes, Abby, she didn't say it or she just said it to me. She goes, Abby, that's the glowing dew of youth. You may remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is something. Well, my mom, we got one of our bigger fights more recently was she threw a present on stage when I was headlining over Christmas. And I get very nervous when I go back to Philadelphia because I have some traumatic experiences and I'm always afraid of who's going to show up or who my mom will bring because the year before she brought a scary person from my past. So um, so then I was already like, well, she'll be on best behavior because of that last time. And then she threw, um, yeah, she threw a present on stage and I, I bombed the whole, sh it was just threw me off. And so we had to have this talk where I was like, what is your goal in this? Because what, if that what went well, goal? what was your goal? Well, she was like, I guess she was like, I thought it'd be funny. I was like, yeah, but who would people be looking at when they were laughing if it had gone well? And she's like me, like, she just wants attention. Yeah. 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 She just wants attention. Yeah. And my dad too. Like my dad, he had open heart surgery in 2011 and he was on his possible deathbed. And I was like, is there anything? you would do differently. And he was like, I probably would have been a stand-up comedian. Like, I think they didn't realize that they could have these careers. My whole family loves attention, which I don't think there's anything wrong with. No, that's fine. And they're very funny. My my dad especially is absolutely hilarious. And I think he could have been a comedian, but that just wasn't a possibility. So then when they saw me take this path and they realized that it was a thing they could have done, then they're like, wait, you can just get attention like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, there was a lot of work in between and honing and stuff like that. Yeah. Getting hired to be the one getting the attention, bitch, sit down. <laughs> but, so now it's That's just amazing. about not getting mad i just don't get mad at her because it's just like you know she's just living out whatever her shit is right 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 right. and there's no i just think about it, i'm like oh they're gonna die and i'm gonna miss them so much i'm missing them every fucking day so i'm just like i don't want to spend my time with them being mad at them yeah and they can't help but be a little bit jealous or a little bit competitive or a little yeah. bit like you just and you don't want your kids to outgrow you yeah a little bit and like when you're on television you've definitely outgrown them you know what i mean <laughs> especially this you now you're on the second time or whatever and what are they going to say well i should say something about her face was oh, shiny. sixth or seventh but six um, or seven yeah on that, that right? show yeah. oh yeah 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 but it's it's an interesting yeah, it's interesting because and then I'm like, but why can't you just be like, I'm you. So you just be proud as a part of you. But then I don't have kids. So I don't know what that's like. Like what you were saying when it's it's all about you. It's all about you. And then you have to do something outside of yourself. And then possibly having a kid is sort of that. But then they're sort of you. They're but sort then of you. You can't they can be, control they can be, them. No, you can't control them. And you don't want to. And you like I take the position that your mom takes, which is I like I let them do whatever because as a dad with girls you gotta be very careful about what you say so i don't i lob no criticisms mm -hmm. if they're wearing something i let their mom handle it yeah. if they say something i let their mom handle it like there's just there's just you know then they if they ask questions that's that's what i know that's when i know i'm supposed to talk when there's a question at the end of the sentence mm -hmm. if there's not a question and i'm talking i'm giving a speech and nobody gives a fuck yeah that is interesting you're interjecting possibly in something that's just a process that's right that's right so i gotta sense. especially i mean i learned that with women originally with my wife but then i started to realize with all people if they haven't asked a question they don't fucking want an answer yeah. they don't want to know they they they're just telling you something and my then you just gotta <laughs> fucking go okay my parents, I remember their biggest, one of their biggest fights was like, my mom screamed, like, just listen, I don't want you to fix it all. And also their bigger fight was fighting over icing. I thought they were going to get divorced. They were like wrestling. I'm like, oh my God, is dad beating mom? And then they were just fighting over a thing of fucking icing. Really? Yeah, we're fat people. It's cute. 
Oh, I love we it. like to be bad. My dad's always like, let's go to the grocery store and get something B-A-D. <laughs> 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 let's go get some cakes. Every time I come home, I'm like, dad, you can't be celebrating us coming home with this. It's crazy how much I eat around my family, but it's fun. It's gluttonous yeah. and fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I go in for a break, I'm like, how much weight can I gain? And I make much, it the goal. And everybody just loves to eat. Do you guys yeah, rally we just, around food? Well, Was we rally food around like the food. the thing that you guys sort of bond over? Yeah, it's like being, it's being bad. I think it's being bad with food. Like oh, being that's like, right. Because my parents were just trying to diet and stuff like that. And I don't think you should qualify good, bad food. Right. I think that's what makes you kind of spin out of control with it. Right. But, you know, it's just my dad just loves. He's just, oh, he just gets all excited about it. It's fun. Oh, that's fun. I like my little daddy bonding. That's great. But we, um, I was still smoking weed um last christmas because i was gonna stop i just always know i need to stop and my brother was like don't stop before christmas <laughs> so like, it's my whole family smokes it's like legal there and um and it really was fun god it was fun like we just all laugh tell stories and stuff and then my I, i've done it before when i've gone home and been completely sober and just had just an enjoyable as enjoyable of the time which i should always remember but it was so fun. Everyone would go to bed. My dad and I would watch like an extra couple episodes of stuff. And then mm -hmm. we'd go upstairs and just raise. We were laughing so hard. We were just eating the little girls' snacks, like their lunch snacks. We just <laughs> ate all of it. We were just being terrible. It was just so yeah. funny. Just crying, laughing. But um, so I always look at that. I'm like, if I'm having fun with my dad, we're cool. <laughs> yeah. We'll deal with the consequences later. But for sure, weed is, is a wrap for me at this point. It's just never been good. And whenever I start smoking it again, it's always like a time when I'm doing good. I'm like, how right, do I fuck right, this right. up? Right, right, right. Yeah, all of a sudden you decide. How do I fuck this up? I don't know. <laughs> like, I smoke know. a little weed. All right. what? Um, where do you want people to follow you? And it's Gregor's on, on Instagram. That's really it. I mean, I have a Facebook page. You can go enjoy it if you'd like. Do you see what Elon Musk tweeted? No. He said, delete your Facebook. It's lame. Did you see that? Wow. Elon Musk is so fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on my shirt. So I know. I didn't see this. Yeah, he said, delete Facebook. It's lame. He's not wrong. He's <laughs> not wrong at all. Well, you know what I've been getting nonstop? I realize how Russia infiltrated everything. They send, do they do this to you? They send me every day I get 20 emails from people going, do you want to make money on your site? Post yeah. these articles. Yep. And every they're just day. like from a different person every day, every day. All the time. And then these ding dongs are like, I can make $5,000 and all I have to do is post this article. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's ridiculous. I'm just like, yeah, those are all up there all the time. Unless you're an African prince, you're not getting a dollar from me, okay? Plus also, you know how like something just looks shitty? Like there's something about Facebook that looks cheap. Yeah. It looks rank. Like there's something about it, like it got ugly or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I mean. It, MySpace was like that for a while. Like MySpace was cool and all of a sudden you're like, one day you're like, this is so lame. Yeah. yeah. This this it's a wrap on this. I still like Instagram a lot. I think Instagram still works. I like out. Instagram. It's like you can make fun visual jokes. You had to be there jokes, I feel like. Also, there's just the way it's set up, the haters have a harder time on there. I don't notice when people like I I just don't notice. I don't get it that much. Do you? Do you get a lot of hate? Uh, not too much, honestly. I get yeah. a few, but it's like, they just want to have sex with me. Like, I just know that you are, it's like, you're trying to, you just want to, you want a piece. Yeah, you yeah, want yeah. a piece. Right. My self-esteem is, it's taken a while, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if they're like, you got, and they will, sometimes they'll notice. They'll be like, you gained weight. I'm like, yeah, I did, but I look good at this weight too. <laughs> but yeah. I also look good at this weight. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's, and it's, so it's just not, and I try to. What I'll do is I'll make That's like insane. videos. insane. Somebody or says you like, like you can't. Isn't it, could you imagine never saying that to anybody? Well, you imagine like, texting that to somebody or looking at their Instagram yeah. going, "Hey, you're putting on weight." Yeah, but then if you look at who they are, you're like, "Oh." Well, of course. It's, it's just always, their way. Yeah. People just want to touch you. They just want to have like a little piece of you. Yeah. And you see like all this stuff. It's such a weird. The internet's so weird. I mean, all of it's strange. All this stuff like Ari getting in trouble for saying all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, it was shitty stuff he said, but it's also like you guys were arguing about Twitter, this thing that didn't exist. Right. Who were you talking about now? Ari Shafir when he wrote, he like wrote hateful stuff about Kobe. Oh, right. And it's just like, he doesn't know. Nobody knows these people. Nobody. It's all just nonsense. Yeah, right. We're all just participating in nonsense. And we have to make other people's points of view matter so that our points of view matter on there too. And it's all just, it's all nonsense. Yeah, it is. It's it all is. fucking nonsense. So follow me on Instagram. Follow Greg on Instagram. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. Like all our stuff. Don't insult us. If mm -hmm. you do, your dad does. Um, check out when when do you think your book's gonna be done? Next year. How long does it take you to write a book? 
It'll take like six months to write it, and then it'll take like 18 months to come out <laughs> if I go through regular publishing. Can I ask your process? Uh, yeah. It's, Is it a secret? No, I just write. You just wake up. Is it a certain time or anything? No. Or just when you feel moved whenever to I feel moved to write. You know, whenever I whenever I go, come on, Greg, do something else. Like after enough Candy Crush. Because you like, do a lot of stuff. You got a lot of stuff going. I on. do, but then uh, there's also days where I don't do anything. Yeah, you know, there's too. days where you're like, "Fuck, I gotta." Write Is Candy Crush your game still? I still play it. Yeah, I got I rid of Candy it. Crush. I'm on twenty forty eight. It's way worse. Twenty forty eight. I don't even know what it it's is. It's not even as colorful or shiny. Oh, but I, I don't. Know. I but mean, I go through phases where they're all deleted. I don't even think about games, and then I, I, I go. Things are going well. Let's download let's do a, game. a game. Let's download a game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you're just sitting there. It's just so mindless. And somebody's like, "Dinner time," and you're like, "Just two more rounds." You're like, fucking leave I'm me alone. I'm just gonna. Once I get this one thing, you're like, "I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get I'm to the gonna, next level." No, I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to buy anything. I want to do this on my own. Oh, I'll buy. Oh, I buy, baby. I'll purchase, bitch. I'm not above it. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a joke. I was in Vegas. And I was like, I already lost 50 bucks. I'm already down 50 bucks. And that's just from Candy Crush. I didn't even leave my apartment yet. My hotel room. That's you a good joke. gambled yet. Wait, did you have a joke about chain wallets? I had it. Yeah. What was I had it? A, you it? My, my joke about it was that I was going to a concert and I went to, and the guy at the, at the, at the door said i need to take your chain wallet and your studded belt and i was like why because of like the war or terrorism or security and he's like no because you're 40 <laughs> and that was 16 years ago <laughs> i love it yeah i love it all right he's always bedazzled the always bedazzled yep greg barrett check out his shit thank you so much for coming thanks Good for time. having me of course the best. come back anytime Bye, bitches. What if somebody did come back anytime? You like, could come so, back anytime. What if somebody was like just knocking? I honestly all the time, wouldn't like, care. Like, I honestly, they're like, I don't say it to people. There's certain people. Not that I've had a guest that I haven't liked, but yeah. there's certain people. I'm like, I feel like we could probably talk for hours. Yeah. Ian Edwards was on twice. Kyle Dunning was on twice. Yeah. Anytime you got something to talk yeah. about, let's talk shit. We should take calls sometime. That would. Oh, be that fun. would be amazing. Let's do a call. Oh, well, yeah. We'll let's figure out calls. how to do that. Let's do that. All right. Bye.